This should be By The Numbers, League of Legends edition, with me, Thorin, and Monte Cristo. And the problem is, Monty, this week, there's no LCS, because the playoffs aren't until, like, over a week away. There's only the barren wasteland of Asian League of Legends, which we all know, it's not a lot going on over there, mate. You know, they don't, <laughs> they don't particularly have competitive teams. You know, when the World Championships comes, you're probably only going to need to know about these teams to know who's going out in the group stage. You know, it won't be relevant, guys. No. Obviously, we've got LPL, we've got LCK. And so, in a diversion from our normal approach, where we try to placate people who only care about the West, <laughs> we're actually going to venture into the minefield that is LPL. Now, I will tell oh, you, Monty. Oh, jeez, please no. There is, there is a positive to be taken right off the bat from LPL, which is the format of LPL, in a sense, actually is is easier to predict than some of the other ones. So, for example, in LCS, we both know, sometimes you have that beautiful setup, like I described a few weeks back, where CLG is playing a, a game they should be expected to win, and you build your whole team around them. But because it's a best of one, you can get completely fucked in a way that is <laughs> less likely in a best of two. Like in a best of two, they come back in the next game, they win the next one, they restore some of that, they get some points anyway, you know. If they get good points and a loss, they in the end you still get some value out of the players, you know. Likewise, whereas in L L LCK, sometimes you're worrying about are they going to play three games, are they going to play two? You know they're just playing two games each time. So it, as much as there's a great deal of variance in the league, in in a sense, if you view it another way, there's also there is a level of consistency. What do you think? On well, this? also like seventy percent of the games are one one splits, so you only have to focus kind of on individual players because their performances are pretty consistent if they always split one one. Um, so you you really want to just narrow down on some players and their average points in LPL. Now, with that said, like you're saying, the best approach here basically is to go for the average and even to sort of know that there might be a 1-1 slit because that's also the one problem I have noticed because I have occasionally ventured into betting, well, uh, doing <laughs> fantasy for LPL. And what I've noticed is because there's so many upsets and so many times that someone does win one of the games, it, it's actually almost ideally suited to wreck people who play fantasy because it makes you think like, <laughs> like you see a player for like like Vici Gaming or something who gets mad points, like 40 points, and you know he probably won't win, but you look and you see that he got some like bullshit win two weeks ago and you're like, ah, but maybe he could win one of the games. <laughs> and then that 40 points, which is hmm, quite unusually low price for salary on this player, uh, what if I was to get that? And so it does, <laughs> there are some traps there, there are some pitfalls. But it's, it's like I've mentioned on past episodes, you have to ask yourself, what are the odds that the Alpha Draft guy has gotten a player that gets tons of points when he wins and he's priced him really low. You're essentially having to make the choice at this point. Either you just know something he doesn't <laughs> or there's a good chance that player is not going to get those points that you're imagining he's going to get. So that's just a little something to watch out for as we go through this because we'll start with LPL here. Because no, over no, 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 at LPL... No. We're no? going to start with how I am good at fantasy. Do you have, are the graphics for that available though? Yeah. <laughs> yes. They already been sent in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this so is LCK. Uh, no, this is well, NALCS. This is, be, this is NALCS from last week. So okay. uh, just taking a look at these points right here. Let me just pull up which day this was. So this was day two, I believe. Hold on, let me just double check this real quick because well, I didn't this have this one. The one it should be Sunday. Uh, it's day one, actually. NALCS day one. So it's Saturday, actually. And those games, just to refresh people's memories, were uh, of week nine were Teammate versus Liquid, Dignitas versus CLG, Gravity versus Tim Team Impulse, and Enemy versus TD or Enemy versus TSM and TDK versus C9. So just because of the selections here, I tried to go very heavily into CLG because I was pretty confident that they were going to be Dignitas. And also CLG does put up very good points when they win, particularly Double Lift. So I wanted to make sure that Double Lift was on my team because he has been just great for fantasy points this season, very consistent. Now, I also thought that TSM would beat NME, but CLG was more reasonably priced because they were playing Dignitas. So I took Lost Boy. I took Xiao Wei Xiao, which ended up being actually Gate, of course, but Team Impulse actually did do quite well in that matchup, kind of unexpectedly beating Gravity. 
But I thought, well, Zhao Weizhou usually gets a lot of points if he wins, so I'll put that outlier out there, see if I can get it. Obviously, Liquid was expensive because they were against Team 8, but also likely to win. And I took Gravity because Gravity doesn't produce a lot of fantasy points, but because of their more macro style, a lot of the times they can take a lot of objectives on the map when they win. So I thought that maybe that would be good. That was kind of my one failing here. That was my one losing team that I actually picked out of all of this. But I ended up doing very, very well in uh, in this one. How high so you can talk did you about get the other for one. that? That seems what? like quite a low overall number of points. So how high did you get? I was playing a half a win, and I got fourth out of 30. Okay. I mean, this seems right now, when you consider that Gravity lost, that I assume a lot of people probably lost on this particular day, since people tend to just go all in on the top player like that. Yeah, but Gravity never produces points either, even when they do win. Bad. Try Bad team for people. fantasy. And so, the, the, okay. highest, the highest person in my league, I was at 179, was 233, and they had a couple of more impulse players, but that was a risky pick based on the fact that we didn't know, especially for a half will win, that that was not a, a likely match for them to win. You know, Unless you're really predicting the impulse versus gravity upset, you wouldn't do that. But CLG was good value. Okay, and then in the other game, you essentially just went all in on KT. Yes, and this was days two or days three and four of last week uh, in Korea. So uh, the matchups this during this period were Spenu versus Anarchy, SK Telecom T1 versus CJ. Of course, the big upset match, Ku versus Najin, and Samsung versus KT. And, and of course, CJ ended up being really, really good value. But the interesting thing is nobody even picked CJ, I think, who is like above me at all. I don't see any CJ players from anybody who is above me. Mostly people were picking Anarchy, which would have been a, a favorite to win over Spenu. But it was also Spenu has been looking better. And Spenu in the second round, Robin actually had a better win rate than Anarchy coming into that match. So I wasn't as convinced. So what I did was I just looked at it and I said, well, KT is really likely to beat Samsung, especially in their current form. So I'm going to get, try and get as many KT players. They also generally put up a lot of points. And then I decided to go with Ku. Obviously, I thought they were going to beat Najin. It did go to three games. So even though Ku lost, I still got a lot of value out of those picks. And then I, I picked one Najin player because Goon gets a lot of points just to sort of balance it out in case Najin won. Um, so even though I had actually the majority, four out of my seven positions were losing in this one, I was playing a half will win and I still won because literally nobody bet on CJ. They, nobody picked CJ players. No one thought CJ could win. I mean, there all. was no reason to, so that, that's no, a correct no reason to that. scenario there. Especially, but yeah, there's, there'd just be no reason to think they could win that one. So, Okay. If you want to, well, let's just start with LPL this week. It's easier if we can just go into LCK afterwards. So, okay, right. let me just pull this up. Starting so, with the LPL. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. By the way, we also have Thorin's Swag Jar contest for LPL. Ten dollars to enter, and you win. Let's see. I think it's like a thousand for first place or something. One of those, one of those sick ones like that, where if you've got ten dollars and you're willing to play with three hundred and ninety-nine other people, then you can win a lot. And by the way, I can tell you right now, there's a lot of swag to be gotten from this particular week. Because here's the thing: there's two ways you can play this contest. You can either do it by the specific day, so you can do play day one, or you can do all. That's how mental. I mean, obviously, this one for, was day three for my swag jar. But in LPL in general, they have mad ones, Monty, where they let you do all. So there's like, yes. I'm not even joking, there's like 10 matchups that are best of two. So you can just yeah. go mental. Like well, I had 12. one where... There's 12, I had one actually. where you look at it, and Qua Chao Gu actually has a really good chance of winning their games, but a bunch of their players are really cheap, and yet gets tons of points. So you can just go ham, and I had like 4,000 plus swag jar left over. That one will win, <laughs> I'm telling you, mate. Next week... I'll have an LPL swag jar there where I had like four, <laughs> almost 5K and I'm going to win. Or I'll admit the initial thing I described before, Alpha Draft game the system and wrecked me by putting them all really cheap salary for obvious well, reasons and maybe I'm wrong. Okay, can we, can we talk about that real quick actually? Because it's okay. really important when we have the, um, 
because the thing about the LPL is that if we have the w days one, two, and three where all 12 best of twos are combined, right, into one contest, it's really important to realize how many times each team is playing in a, in a given week. Because sometimes a team will only have one best of two, or sometimes a team will have three best of twos in, in a week, right? So you, you have to be cautious about how many times these teams are actually playing. For example, I'm just trying to look right now which teams have three best of twos. For example, this week, King has three, which is the highest you can have, the highest number you can have. WE has three, but EDG, for example, only has one. So you really, Snake has three. Uh, so you really have to be careful about that when you start to pick players because obviously you want to pick the players from the teams that have more uh, more in terms of those those best of twos because okay. you want the points. <laughs> so we'll do it day by day for the sake of that, doing it like that. So on play day one, remember there's going to be fucking tons of games, so... On play day one, you have unlimited potential versus Vici Gaming. Now, oh, who should win that? What is the form there, Monty? Should be Vici Gaming winning? Uh, hold on, let me pull that back up. So, I, I, it should be, but then again, it's it can be a little bit hard to tell right now. Uh, UP has pulled off upsets, but I think in their current form, basically, we're looking at, uh, I mean... <sighs> They've the thing about UP is they've actually been somewhat surprising in terms of their ability to split, and Vici right now is obviously still having some difficulties. I mean, they still don't have they still have Dandy in the top lane, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess they've been doing a little bit better. They did split their matches with uh, with M3 and with QG or. Um, excuse me, Snake last week, and then they 2 0 uh, King. So I think they're looking better. And the thing about the format with the LPL is actually now that they've identified that the, the playoff format is going to be a gauntlet, some of the teams that are lower off in the standings are going to be doing a lot better. Right, because they they now have more incentive to play because they know that it's not just going to be a big bracket like it was last season, which is very important to which of these teams are going to be performing. Because um, the I'm thing trying. is, in a world in which you think UP could win this series, their AD carry Scotch in wins gets 45 points, which is like an astronomical number. So if you actually think they can win or even split half, and even in losses, he gets 28. Yeah. So actually, that's a, not a bad little gamble there. Yeah, and that that actually is... Scotch has been doing well, and a lot of that is actually sort of heart. But Scotch is in the top 10 in terms of average points when winning or losing, and he's number one in the league when winning. So that's absolutely true. Scotch can definitely be a lot of value picked there. I mean, when we talk about a lot of these 1-1s, one uh, the players that you really want to think about in terms of just average points in the game are Pawn, God V, Doin B, Deft, TNT, Clear Love, Imp, Scatch, and Uzi. Those are the top 10. Obviously, Uzi's not playing right now, but... Those those guys, and these are the names you'd think of. These are the really big names in the LPL, the stars, the consistent players. So it's not too surprising that that's going to be the case. Um, but you're right. Uh, uh, UP, when they're winning, Sketch and Long, the top laner for, for UP, are both in the top five in terms of points. And based on this, they actually do have a decent potential to win versus Vici. I think Vici will probably win this, but it's uh, with the possibility of a 1-1, one -one, there still be, could be some good points involved. Now, the next game, here's the thing. On the surface, it's easy. It's LGD versus King, and King is bottom of the league. You know, LGD obviously is considered very strong. Some people think they're even going to be at Worlds and be a, a contender there. So on paper, should be no problem. Easy win, 2-0. The problem is, this is just to highlight what a nightmare LPL is. Think about when a team is in last place in LCK or LCS. They'll tend to be a team that like is winning no games, like is winning like three games out of 18 or is winning like two games out of 26. And you'll be like, that team's total trash. They never win. Okay. King doesn't win series, Monty, but they still won one third of the games they've played 
so far. That's how competitive LPL is, that the worst team in the league has won 12 out of 36 games. So I'm just putting that out there. That there's, there's <laughs> no, there, there are very few locks, 100% locks in LPL, because again, they only have to get one to, to make it a split. Now, with that said, LGD should wreck King. Yes, that's true. And Wayless slash God V, as he is now known, he is... His ID is God V in the LPL, but on Alpha Draft, he is wist- listed as Wayless, his old ID. And he definitely is a great pickup. Again, he's been super consistent whether they win or lose. He's in the top 10 when it comes to points while winning. He's the highest member on LGD. Imp is the one you're going to go for after that. So these are guys that you you definitely want to pick up. Wayless actually, even though he's the most, the second most expensive mid at 8,400, isn't the, actually that expensive considering the points that he gets. For example, if we compare him to Imp, he's cheaper than Imp, but he puts up more points on average. So there's a lot of value around picking uh, Wayless, especially against King in a matchup that LGD is likely to 2-0 because LGD has been on a kind of a tear recently. Uh, ever since the playoff format was announced, they only had one match last week. They went 2-0. Week before that, they went 2-0 over M3 and 1-1 versus Snake, and they lost 0-2 to EDG, okay. But that's to be expected because EDG has been powering up with their main roster and is on a massive win streak right now. And it's also worth pointing out that it's possible, based on the more recent games, that you might not even see TBQ, Schwen, who is known as the shittest player on their team in the lineup. He's listed on Alpha Draft, but they've been using Shaoxi, and he's actually been yeah, doing very well in the game. So admittedly, he's quite expensive as a jungler, but if you pick T- Schwen there, you might actually be getting a much better player there. So that might even be like a little sleeper pick for anyone who doesn't know that is just playing on the site and doesn't watch this show. Yeah, he's still... He still is definitely like pretty expensive, Schwen. But uh, like you're saying, Schwen's the jungler stats for uh, LGD are getting better. And I think the last time I didn't see the uh, I didn't see the matches between LGD and WE this last week because why the fuck would I watch Erect that? Him. Uh, but was Xiao Xi playing? in those games? He played very well as well, yeah. Okay, so basically the last time that Schwen even played was versus EDG. He hasn't played in any of their last three matches, so we should probably assume that he's going to be playing this week against King. So that's just a little one in case someone wants to potentially get an edge that someone else doesn't notice, because obviously on the, on the site, they can't know all these different players. So then we go to Snake plays against Royal Never Give Up. One of the best names I have ever heard of in esports, <laughs> which for anyone doesn't know, is the team that has Shaohu and actually used to have Ackerman and th- the team that actually was formerly known as Gamti. That's the lineup we're talking about well, here. And they are sort of. It was like King combined with Gamti before King and Royal swapped when rosters they, after when Royal they didn't got get relegated. relegated, but they did. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. So, that whole situation was a giant shit show. But they, in theory, these, this is one of the worst teams. So we're talking about Snake, who's actually third in the league at the moment versus the second to last team in the league. Yes. Now, it should be a victory for Snake. That's the initial form, correct? Right. But remember that Snake tends to split 1-1 because even though they're in third place, they're 20-16 and 16 overall in terms of games. Sure, a Royal Never Give Up is second to last in the league, but they've also split nine times. Uh so Royal, you have to think that Snake is going to 2-0 here, especially as they want to keep kind of ahead of LGD, which is nipping at their heels right now. They're only one point ahead of LGD, and I'm sure they would like to be as high as possible in the playoffs to avoid playing more matches. Uh, so Snake, I think, probably will 2-0 them. They've been splitting a lot recently against LGD and against QG and against um, Vici. But they're a solid team. They're a lot better than they were last season with the inclusion of you. Um, when we look at uh, Snake, the problem is is that they don't have very many good fantasy players, unfortunately. Crystal is their highest player. and Even he's, he's not uh, that great. That's the problem. Yeah, that is the problem. He's at, like at 28th uh, or 27th, rather, in the league. So they don't actually put up as many fantasy points as you might like. 
And a lot so of that, players so that one are on, really on form low. looks like a, a strong team versus a bad one. But the problem is you're not going to get that many points from from the good ones. Now, admittedly, some of the players are cheap, so maybe if you want to round out a roster, you can pick someone. But the, yeah, you know, there's not many here. very cheap. Crystal's Most of them are. Yeah, That's he, actually he's like the value. second cheapest. Yeah, Crystal so he's not bad you, if you want to round out and hope that they win yeah. two zero. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to be picking up like a lot of these. It's like LGD players, and you want to round out the lineup with with some snake guys. These guys are going to be good value, more than likely. So the final game on day one is WE versus EDG, and obviously EDG is the number one team in the whole league. WE still one of the worst teams. They're actually tied second for last with Royal Never Give Up. So, and also the other key thing to note is that EDG wins the majority of their series, actually. They do they do tie as well, but not even close to as many as some of these other teams in the league. I mean, there's teams in the league that have double-figure ties. And, They're only six. Times. And EDG is on a 10-game or five best-of-two win streak in the LPL right now. They actually haven't even lost uh, a game in LPL in over a month. So that is... They're definitely heating up. They were playing around with their roster in the beginning of the season, but they're back to their MSI winning roster right now. Now they're looking really strong. That said, EDG is another one of those teams that's so dominant in terms of their macro play right now. Even when we were watching games this past week that happened where they were playing QG, there weren't a lot of kills by LPL standards because... EDG was putting on a very smothering performance, and EDG is not the best team in terms of fantasy. In fact, I would rather, I think, take LGD players this week than EDG players. Not only is LGD cheaper, but they just tend to do better. If you want points, Deft is 2030. He's the highest on EDG in terms of points per game. But again, they are likely to actually do well here. And a lot of these EDG players do very well not only when winning, but when losing. So they're very consistent whether they win or lose. So they're they're very stable. And you want kind of deft, pawn, and clear love. These are the guys that get a lot of those points. Like basically the big problem here is that when it comes to LPL, EDG is equivalent to what Fnatic was in EU LCS and SKT is in Korea, where it's like they don't get the most points, but they're going to be the most expensive because they're almost the guaranteed points. So right. you can do it if you want, but you don't. T- normally, if you want to, tr- if you're in a contest where you're trying to get really high, you're not in just a half will win. You're trying to win the contest. Okay. So the problem is, in every region, you tend to have to take more risk, but for more points. So if you're in Korea, you're going to take someone like CJ or KT that get more points. Or if you're in EU, you're going to pick Origin. Or if you're in, well, and even in LPL, LGD is the obvious one. Or actually, someone like Chao Gu at the moment. Some of these people. It's more risk as to whether they win, but the points are going to be way higher. So it depends what type of contest you're in. It wouldn't be terrible to take some EDG players like deft if, if you're actually going to play a half yeah. win, but I, w- I wouldn't do it for any contest where you're trying to get like top 10 out of 300 people or something. Yeah, and it, they're just so expensive too. And even though they're expensive, you're just much less likely to get the points out of them because they don't put up that many individually. If you want to take a stab at maybe somebody like LGD going 2-0, you're likely to get more points that way. Okay, so now in day two, we have, starting off, we have Chao Gu versus Royal Never Give Up. And obviously Chao Gu is a team that have been doing phenomenally well. They've won two-thirds of their games. And, and when the... Yeah. This is the team you want to go for for fantasy. Absolutely. Like I said, this is basically the origin of China. They got mad <laughs> yeah. stats on everyone. Yeah, TNT and Doon B are behind Sketch. Just if we're two and three, when we talk about players points while winning, and they're actually relatively cheap this week. I mean, TNT is fourth on the or on this day. TNT is fourth in terms of his uh, cost. Uh, Doon B is. Fourth third as a mid laner and they are very likely to beat uh, Royal. So I think this is really good value. Now it should be said that QG splits a lot of their matches. They split a lot of the time. Um, but TNT and Doon B still average about 30 points if you include their losses. So they are pretty darn safe picks. TNT is the one that he is. He's going to be good value here at only 
Like those two on this on this particular day seem like an, a, a, a no brainer to pick. Because uh, yes. usually at mid and ADC, you want most points. Very good chance there. By the way, your camera's all blurry. It's like out of focus for some reason. Yeah, it looks looks the same. Oh well. There yeah, we now it's fixed. Okay, so I mean that one seems like an obvious one because it, you got a very good chance they could win there. But then we have. So here's the one we have. Unlimited potential plays Snake. Now, we just described Snake have a problem with not getting many fantasy points. Now, UP have players that get some crazy fantasy points, but can they beat Snake? That's the question. Like, is it viable? Yeah. Well, because the players are, we, are reasonably cheap. When we talk about the... So the previous matchup, obviously, each of these LPL teams play each other twice in a best of two in the in the ra- in a double round robin over the course of the season. And... They split 1-1 last time they met. So it's not like it has been so cut and dried. And uh, unlimited potential, they have a below 50% win rate. They're 14-20 and 20 when, when it comes to games. But they have 10 times that they've split with the team. And yeah, so there's there's that aspect to them. I still think that Snake is likely to win this. I think I'd stay away from this match given that Snake doesn't produce that many points. Right now, um, maybe you take Crystal as a flex, but he's also very expensive. So I don't think there's a lot of value in this matchup unless you want to just try and all in on the fact that Sketch and Long get a million points win, unlimited potential wins, and you think there's going to be an upset. But this late in the season when the playoff race is really on, I think we're going to see fewer and fewer of those upsets. So here's an interesting one because you have IG play against M3 and in the standings they're pretty close together but the problem is IG doesn't tend to get tons of points to get like a good stable amount whereas M3 if they win get shit total loads of points. So you have to ask can M3 win this? Yeah. That is that is going to be the question. M3 also oh man. Like every player they have Gets mad stats when they win. Everyone. I mean, M3? No. I mean, yeah. they're okay. They're not... Ab- SMLZ is way up there uh, towards the top. But... Yeah. Uh, uh, Dada is like a top four or five mid laner in terms of points. Jungler yeah, is at true. 36 points. Yeah, Condi, Condi actually is one of... He is, is that the one the where highest, you wouldn't expect if you watched the highest playing? point jungler. He is the highest point jungler in the LPL. Like They're the team where you wouldn't expect that their stats are this good, but they are rather good. And actually, when you go and you look, they're pretty cheap this week. They're second cheapest. So basically, Alpha just thinking they're going to lose to IG here. I don't think that's as cut and dry. I think they can definitely 1-1, maybe even win. In which case, they're all super cheap. Round out your roster with those players. Live the dream. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do, people. <laughs> Basically, I'm gonna put my hopes and dreams into Dade's hands. And just say, Oh, jeez. Tread, tread carefully, Dade. For you, tread. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, even if they split, there's probably some decent points there. And actually, in their previous meeting, M3 did two OIG. Um, I think IG looks really unstable right now, and they have nearly the same point totals and a very similar record, uh, M3 and IG. So I think this is going to go 1-1, but IG doesn't produce points either. They're not a great team for that. So I think you're right, Thorin. I think you can definitely pick up some nice M3 players here. Uh, Again, look at Condi. Uh, He's very cheap. He's only 6,600, but he puts up a lot of points. He puts up more points than any other junk in... uh, in LPL, so that that's probably a, a good pick. So you know, normally, Monty, I'm actually against like the power of belief and just wishing something can happen. But because it's possible here, and if it does happen, it's like I cracked the system and I want it so. And it much, already you know? has happened. It yeah, already it can has happen. happened. So the I mean, I just real. feel like basically as a literary illusion, like like I kind of reference that. I feel like that that poem by Yeats where it's like, "But I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my <laughs> dreams under your feet." Tread softly because you tread on my dreams, Dade. That's all I'm saying, okay? I'm just, I took it to another level. I see. That's why I make the big bucks. So, okay, that's the one where it's not bad. The problem is on that one, it's the same scenario. Like, if you actually think IG is going to win, there's better people you can get out there. I mean, 
they also tend to be reasonably expensive IG players because it, it's expected they're going to win the series. But they don't, they don't have that many great point getters. That's the problem. You think no, some of the players are very good. No, I, a kid is on top in that category. But you think, oh, wow, Kakao and Rookie are on yeah, this yeah. team. Well, I mean, Rookie d- puts up less points than both Kid and Zetai. The problem so. is if you actually think about how it goes, though, that's because... Like it, like Rookie is so good. He is the sort of person who just shits on someone, but he has like four kills, and they just win the game off that. You know, he doesn't well, have to also, go to the crazy twelve kill. Sometimes he status. just feeds too. That's what happens when you're playing solo, mate. Without your jungle <laughs> to help you. So the final <laughs> series is King versus World Elite. Now, this is basically <laughs> two of the worst teams in the whole league playing each other. So. Let's see if there's anything to be gotten out of this, Monty, because King players are very cheap. Well, Delete players are like in the middle. So let's see if there's any points to be gotten out of this potentially. I mean, WE, WE coming into this match actually does have a slightly higher point total than King. They're two points ahead. But in terms of game score, WE is 13 to 21. King is 12 to 24. This could really go either way. Their previous meeting was a 1-1 split. Um... I guess neither of these teams even puts up that many points on the rare occasions that they actually win I mean, games. Name gets 36 points if he wins, so I'm just saying. Just saying. Yeah, well, Name. If, you, if you're like me and you like to lose money, just put, put it on Name and believe that it's season four. Yes. <laughs> I think actually Name might be a very decent pick here, considering that he's, relative, he's the second cheapest AD carry. And he gets more points than anyone else in this game when he wins. And because we can say it's probably going to be a 1-1 split. Uh, and WE is just very low in terms of points. Mystic is like 29th in the league, and he's the highest WE player there is. So, bit bit grim for WE fans. In fact, WE, the, rest, the other four members of WE are all in the bottom 10 in terms of points while winning. So, I would definitely maybe... Think about taking some king players like, yeah, yeah. I would, I would look at, I would look at the king players. So day three, we start off with Snake versus M3. So again, as we've the storyline we've put forward so far, all you're basically asking about this one is you're either going to skip it or you're going to say can Masters three win and get some points. Now in terms of can they actually win? Because the thing with Masters three is they are like a super up and down team. They have no middle ground, it seems. You know, they either go ham or they just get wrecked completely. It's it's either Dade has a good day or Dade has a bad day. That's it. Dade decides to play. Dade does not decide to play. So, in terms of how they're priced up, most three players quite cheap. Dade sixty eight hundred, SMLZ seven thousand. So, I mean, listen, I don't know. Buy a big I think web, I, but. But I don't think it's ridiculous. I, I don't think I, I do this. No, I don't think I do this. Maybe I think about taking Crystal, uh, but even then he's a middle of the pack, pack middle of the pack fantasy player. Now Snake did two O M three the last time they came through, and I think Snake is far more desperate to reach the upper echelons of the standings right now, given the format of the LPL playoffs. But I they're just M three is unlikely to two O. Um, you have QG versus WE, which if you can afford some of the players like TNT in the next match are going to give you much better points because QG can definitely win that 2-0 and, and uh, indeed did on the last meeting. So here's the problem, Monty. We do that. We go over now to QG, WE. Now on paper, that should be like, well, easy, QG, Q, taking that one. And then you have a look and their players are quite cheap considering the points they get in Monty. Like look how far down TNT is on the AD carries. He is the sixth highest AD carry. It's the same for no, Join not. B. In, in no, he's not. He's, he's the highest. Oh, it's, be, are you? it's because the salaries are mixed up on the site, if you have a look. Like the salaries are. That's actually a point there. For one of the salaries is off there. He's the fifth highest for AD carries. They, no, I think you're looking at the LPL all instead of week 10, day three. Uh, no, I'm look- looking at week ten to day three, but there's some there's something mistaken there for some reason. Like the salary, you know, normally it's listed by salary pricing. Oh, I'm not having that your, issue. The so. order's just off anyway. I, well, TNT is the most there. expensive at oh, 9300 for 80 carries. So, yeah, he's he is pricey, but again, this is a match that is pretty much a lock for QG. 
So you have to believe that Don B and TNT can pull through. Now, how how are you guys? How are you going to fit these guys in there? Is going to be the question. Maybe you do try and take a gamble on some of these M three players or something like that. Maybe you fill out with uh, some OMG players out of the next matchup, considering Cool isn't that expensive. So IG versus Royal never give up. Is that just one you're going to stay clear of? No, I mean. I think IG has a decent chance to win. Again, IG, just in terms of points, they're pretty ass. Yeah, but the thing is they are priced, uh, some of them, around the middle of the pack. So that actually does make well, sense in terms of you, if you need someone in a roster. Well, Kid Kid is the second most 80, expensive 80 carry. Now he is $900 in terms of salary less than TNT. So that's a pretty substantial difference in terms of price. But I still think I'd rather have Crystal rather than Kid here. They get approximately the same number of points. Crystal is much cheaper. Um, but again, they're just uh, there's not really any big time any big time point getters in this particular game. To get excited about, maybe you yeah, think maybe. about you start thinking about Zhao Hu. But that's the thing, because to round out your roster for this particular day, you're going to need someone cheap who has a chance of winning. So I don't know. I think I suddenly, start, suddenly I think I start playing in. I think I start playing in the King OMG match, honestly, instead of this one, because okay, the, the K, OMG has been doing I mean they've they've had some drama recently so you have to start questioning like how stable are they internally they split with WE this last week they split with IG this last week they just haven't been looking that strong um and they lost O2 to Snake uh the the week before that it's it's been a bit of an up and down ride I think for OMG when we take a look at their their more recent statistics so is this a game where you're considering Name seventy five hundred third cheapest AD carry? I think this is again. That's a really big value if if King can do well. And considering they did split, like I said, with WE last week, there that becomes kind of an attractive buy. Okay, right. That's LPL. Let's go over to LCK. Oh boy. Because over here we have some. The thing with LCK, one of the things I actually like about doing LCK on the Alpha Draft site is that when you do one play day rather than like one or two, so you can sometimes get some interesting ones in terms of like you sort of know. It's like more like everyone's going to be roughly know where they're going in terms of the form. Like you'll usually have a massive favorite versus a lesser one, two that can go either way. And it's more like just making the right decisions over who you pick as the cheap players as opposed to these massive wide open LPL type fields where there's a million directions you can go in. It's more, you know, whoever wins is going to have picked like the one out of the CJKT, you know, that sort of a scenario, and then filled them in with the right locks to fill the roster out. Right. Uh, just uh, let me go back to LPL for just a second. For those people who want to play all days of LPL together, just remember that the teams that have three games are Snake, WE, Royal, and King. The teams that have two games are IG, QG, uh, UP, and M3. And the teams that have one game are just EDG, LGD, OMG, and Vici. So when we talk about uh, the, the the players on the teams that you really want to get who have three games, um, remember that there's a lot of value, especially in Name. So that is that is something to keep in mind. Also, maybe start thinking about um, Crystal uh, as as a decent pickup. Um, and maybe, and again, maybe even a, a player like a player like Xiao Hu could be actually very interesting in terms of his value. Uh, and so Name definitely going to be decent in that regard. He's probably the highest point player for wins, and then uh, Xiao Hu is is pretty far up there too. So these are some more of the players you can think about in LPL for the guys that are really playing those three matches and have the most chance to get you points. And also for those ones, that's where people like M3, if you really think they can upset, could get you mad amounts of points because they're playing two matches, which is still pretty good. Yep. And obviously they, and they're not going to be the most huge. expensive ever and they're going to get insane points, you know, so it just depends what you think the odds are. Okay, so over in LCK, we have combined day three and day four, which is starts in 30 hours apparently. 
So we have four matches here. So you have Najin, Samsung Galaxy, KT versus Ku, IMSKT, and Jinair Svenu. Now, obviously, the interesting thing here is there are three matches where one team is heavily favored, which is Najin, Samsung Galaxy, IMSKT, and Jinair Svenu. And then you have the one match where it's, you could ask 10 people, and I think five would give you a different answer each. It's like KT versus Ku. So this is a, an obvious one where to start off with, you have to say you're probably going to build some rosters where it's KT players or Ku players and then fill around, right? Um, I would say that KT is probably... I, I predict a 2-0 for KT over Ku. Um, just because of current form, you have to remember that KT has yet to... The only team they've actually lost to since adding Pickaboo is SKT, and they only lost 1-2. Meanwhile, Ku lost to Najin last week. So... They um, And they didn't really look that good in doing it. They kind of just got wrecked in the laning phase. And so their early game is becoming more and more of a problem. And KT has had a very punishing early game recently. So I think this is just a bad matchup. Um, uh, I think this is just not a great matchup for for Ku. But that said, let's start. Let's actually start talking about Najin versus Samsung because Najin surprisingly against Ku looked like they had their shit together. Their shot calling was substantially better in games two and games three. They showed how powerful they are in that early game position. So, and then we have players like Gung who actually do get a lot of fantasy points and OQ as well. And I think that Najin players are pretty cheap. I mean, we look at Gung here. He's third in terms of mid laners. OQ, okay, a little bit more expensive, but still considerably cheaper than uh, than Pilot slash Captain Jack. So I think Najin is the one that I would probably be building the core of my fantasy picks around right okay. here, especially uh, Goong and OQ because they're not the most expensive. And then I sort of work outward from there. But also you have to think that KT is cheap this week, and I think this is a 2-0 for KT over Ku. KT so is on, really cheap. On KT? And Arrow is huge for fantasy points. So on KT, Someday has 31 points as a top laner, which is quite a lot for a top. Yeah, and it's you, actually the uh, most expensive. Surprisingly, it's less than Shy. Uh, Shy has overtaken Someday because what's been interesting about KT is that when we used to talk about KT in the first uh, round robin is that they didn't have very they didn't have the strongest shot calling so they were unable to close games quickly and a lot of these games got really bloody but ever since the addition of Pickaboo they've been able to close out games with fewer kills and more quickly without getting without it being a giant bloodbath so as a result the KT players have dropped um, while Coco and Space are still really high up there the rest of the KT players have sort of dropped in terms of their fantasy point values. Arrow is still good. Nagne is still good. I mean, we're still talking about like top 10 guys here, but it's no longer that Someday and Arrow are both in the top five, which they used to be. So Someday has actually dropped below Shy. But yes, I think Someday still good value for a top laner. But the, but the thing is, they're not going to go super ham as they not did anymore. before. Yeah, probably not. Okay, if Especially someone thinks Ku is going to win, Ku is nearly always the same way every week, won't you? They're always reasonably priced. They have a couple of players who do quite well in points, and then it's more just if you think they're going to win. Yeah, Kuro's top five for fantasy points. So Kuro and Prey are the guys you want to go for. Prey slightly below Kuro. But I just think this is a really dangerous matchup for Ku because just last week we saw them lose to Najin. And Najin is a team that plays the laning phase well, applies early aggression, and has that early dominance, but has questionable shot calling to follow it up. Whereas KT has had great shot calling since adding Pickaboo, and KT is also very aggressive in the early game. So I'd be surprised if Ku won. Um, it's just I, I think Ku is falling off. And KT has definitely been powering up ever since they, they added Pickaboo to the roster. Now, here's the interesting thing, because obviously SKT IM is a lock for SKT. People would expect that to be reasonably quick because a lot of these other teams in the league suddenly aren't going super ham and there's no CJ at the moment who still do. Suddenly SKT players, obviously they're very expensive still. 
they suddenly aren't actually that far behind in points. Like before, the problem was they'd be around the 30 points, but someone else might be on like 14. So it was like you just gamble on like Goong or whoever it was at that point in time, you know. Whereas now, actually, the points aren't that ridiculous. Yeah, they're still, they're still less. I mean, if we compare a guy like Coco, he puts up nearly 10 more points compared to Faker in a game. Sure, but he's not playing of, in this game, though, you know. Right, I'm just, I'm just making, I'm making, sure. I'm making a point of comparison. Uh, Faker still puts about, like, five less than Captain Jack or the Gen Air 80 carries who are the focus of that team. But you're right. He's cheaper than, than Captain Jack this week. Marin is the second highest point maker on, on SKT. But... Again, this this series is likely to be so one-sided in favor of SKT that even though SKT may win, there probably aren't going to be that many points. And at least in KT versus Ku, you have a better chance of going to three games. Um, you know what I mean? So are you worried then for this final match? That, okay, Jinair versus Spenu, because there's so many expensive players on Jinair, despite the fact some of them get very good points, that this should just be a 2-0 and they won't actually deliver on the points. Yeah, that would be my assumption here. Um, I think that there's always, just given Najin and their inconsistencies, there's always a possibility that Samsung Najin goes to three games as well because Samsung can put together sometimes one good game in a best of three and take a victory. They're not that terrible. Uh, and usually they come in with like a good strategy to a match so you can you can sort of get some some value out of the Samsung picks and maybe even more value out of the Najin picks as a result. But... I think if you can build around Najin, and I would say KT, but maybe some other people disagree and say Ku, you should do that. But I don't see – I mean this is definitely not going to – I suppose there's the outside possibility that Spenu takes a match if Jin Air plays like a bunch of substitutes. You never know if that's going to happen, right? Um, because if Jin Air plays like, you know – Kuzan and Winged here, their substitute mid and jungler – just because that's what a lot of teams do against Spenu. I mean, CJ dropped a game against Spenu because they played three subs. So, until you know, like, it's hard to say until we know what those those final rosters are going to be. But Spenu is... Because it is worth pointing out. The problem for, for fantasy is that LCK teams don't know about fantasy or give a fuck about it, so they still win the series if they win two to one, and they can afford to experiment on your dime, basically. And you <laughs> yes. just see the roster like, no, 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 no! I had a whole team based on that, but you don't have a choice at that point in time. And also, unfortunately, with the way it works in LCK, it's not just that your player isn't in that match. He, you're still basically you get that substitute as your player who you picked right. on the fancy thing. So that can be a downside to look out for. Now, obviously, I mentioned in LPL. That's why I've got my swag jar. Monty has his own tournament in OGN. His is actually just not, it doesn't even have a baller name. It's called Monte Cristo's Watch OGN, which is like, fucking Brit. Well done there, guys. You've nailed that one. <laughs> usually, hey, usually okay. my contests are called the Braggart's Corner. Thank you very much. They should be. That would be a better name. So... Monte Cristo's watch OGN, there was base sort of appeal to his own yeah, <laughs> necessity as a, for his job. But that, that also is a $10 entry. And I'm guessing by the amount, it's the same exact as one as mine. So it must be like around 1,000 first place. And that one goes live in 30 hours. So you still got plenty of time to enter that one. 400 entries possible. And obviously... Yeah, it should be. Should be good. Maybe, maybe uh, Spenner will actually do well because Jin Air also... Not looking so great right now. They were playing yesterday and they got the 2-0, but it wasn't that pretty. I'd love to or just the, get they got some the two insight. Rather. I just want to know who the people are out there who are playing Magma Chamber 1v1 contest for $1,000 <laughs> in LCK. <laughs> like, who are you? I didn't know whales existed in like <laughs> fantasy bang. Like it's, it's probably really interesting. I'd love to know who the fuck you are. Like I am some kind of sheik from the Middle East. Like what is going on here? Like I just, I, someone contact the show, please. I just really like to know who you are and what you're doing. Do you ever win these things? Are you just hemorrhaging like a mother? Well, I, just well, I just love to know. The other, the other question is because you, you realize you have to have two people in the magma yeah, chamber because yeah. it's just a 1v1. So who is the other person in there? There has to be actually two people because one person has to be like, all right, here we go, $1,000. And then the other person has to sit there and be like, oh, there's already one person registered. Time to match up. Throw down the gauntlet, right? The 1v1. 
See, I feel like the, there must be someone out there, Monty, who's doing that and who's wrecking face. He's just winning these 1v1s every single week, taking people's thousands, like, <laughs> just winning all this. And he's he must just be the sickest expert because the balls this guy has to play. <laughs> Knowing, by the way, like as we mentioned, that he might put a bet down and then Najin or something just fields three subs and he's got 1K riding on it. Meanwhile, the other guy just picked like some okay points, but not a ball. Like, think of the high <laughs> well, stakes these guys are playing at. The the best part of it, too, is that if you click on the contest where you see the prize payouts, you can actually see the usernames of the people who are entered. So who is the person who goes in first and lets their username be known in the 1v1? And then who is the person who comes in next and is like, oh, that's scrub. We, uh, you know, we've had all these 1v1s. I win 60% of the time. I'm going in on this. If I ever roll, get my bankroll high enough, I, I, t I promise you people now, it probably won't happen, so that's why I can say it. If I ever get to 1,000 on of my Alpha Draft account, I'll fucking do it, guys. I'll, 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 I'll enter one of these, whoever I'm playing, and then I'll, I'll post the results everywhere. So that'll, that's good. Listen, that's going to be like six months down the line. It's going to take me a while to get that, to roll it up to 1K. But I will gladly grind to that level just to blow it all for everyone's entertainment. So there we go. That's, that's a little something to look forward to one day. Uh, anyway, is there anything else about LCK? I think that's it, isn't it? That's it for this week. Okay, so there's the matches. I'm assuming next week, let me think, next week we should have the NALCS, EU LCS, and, and it depends if they have the contest up in time, but assuming they do, EU LCS, NALCS will return, and obviously now we'll have some playoff matches, which are best of five, so that actually had a whole new dynamic we've never had yeah, to think Yeah, that's going to be really interesting. So we'll have to even think about our strategy, what we're going to do there. And I think for those ones, we should do some sort of deal, Monty. Like for those, just to make it more interesting, we should have to make bets on the specific LCS. And then we should see how we each did after each week. I think we should add an okay. element of right. risk into it, you know, so All right, the pride factor. Okay, are, right, gonna, that's the are, you gonna, are we going to 1v1 each other on the show? Are we actually going to go in on the, the 1v1 competitions? I think we should. What, put $1,000 off? Not one that they're okay. smaller the ones. Ones. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, look, if in fact we'll, that's what we'll do, okay, Monty. If there's some that are like smaller ones for L LCS or whatever, we'll try and figure out if there's some matches where we think that the other person's gonna win or we'll just go in on that one. Okay, let's do it. I think <laughs> that's a good idea. It. And then we'll have That'd literally a one v one section <laughs> called Magma Chain or something. Now we have to figure out a better name than that. I think just Mano Imano is a better name, you know? <laughs> that's a better name. So anyway. <laughs> alphadraft.com fantasy esports league of legends i believe i've said all the things i'm supposed to say now thank you for the money and watching <laughs> goodbye <laughs>